free to rise. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse. What's his promise will endure. His joy is gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, the joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading. How many of you are happy to be in God's presence? Let me see your hand up. That is good. God is good? All the time. And all the time. God is good. <laughs> A quick scripture here. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11, It says, For I know the thoughts that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So whatever you may be going through today, just drop it all in the presence of God and know that Jesus is the center of it all. He knows what he has in plan for you, and he will take care of you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, sing a beautiful song now, Jesus at the Center.
Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart. It's all about you. Jesus, be the center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. And every knee will bow, every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about it's all about you. Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Jesus. When the music fades, all is stripped away. It's all about you. It's all about you. 
His precious name, drawing near to Him, experiencing Him and knowing Him, that's what this is all about. His presence is in this place today, that we would recognize His presence. We would open our hearts to you today and we would just recognize it's all about you, Jesus. It's not about the songs we sing or the style. It's all about the fact that your presence is here and we just want to lift you up and we use different methods songs. It's all of which minister to our hearts. Open our hearts to you today, Lord, by your spirit. May there be fresh passion, fresh hunger. Lord, work in our hearts. For those that are discouraged, bring encouragement. For those that need a touch from the Lord, that you would bring healing to their bodies today. And as we think about those that are in need, we think about those that are are also are grieving today, Lord. We, we think of Mary Robertson, Lord, and her family and the passing of Mary's dad. We pray that, Lord, you'd minister to them and their family as they would travel uh, this week for this service, minister to them, give them safe travels, minister to their hearts. We think about uh, also Cheryl and, and Melody, Lord, in the passing and of their aunt. We just pray that, Lord, you would be with them, minister to them as a family as they travel, and keep your hand upon them, encourage them today in this time of grief. Others we'd be praying for. We pray for Linda's sister, Lord Maria, touch her and heal her. We think of Ayla's brother who's needing a touch from the Lord, Victor, and others that we've been praying for in our bulletin, minister to them. Again, Lord, I just pray that you would have your way in this service. We want to honor you. We want to give you our best. And we thank you for your presence here today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Well, good morning, Elam. Good morning. It's good to see you here. It's great to worship together and enjoy the presence of the Lord. And I see there are some of you that are visiting with us today. We just uh, hope that you'd feel right at home. Worshiping this time of year, people are traveling, coming and going. If you're here for the first time, we do have visitors' cards that you could, if you could take a moment, you could find them in the pew right in front of you. If you could take a moment, take one, fill it out, and put it in the offering plate on the way out, or give it to an usher. We just love to have a record of your visit with us today. Well, last night was a special night, right, Bill? Yeah. Where's Brenda? There's Brenda. Oh, Brenda. Yeah, why don't, we, why don't we give Bill and Brenda a hand for the work. They, they were very busy the last few days, but yesterday was a big day. In fact, I, Brenda told me she's going to sleep through the service today, and I actually gave her permission, but that's the only one, <laughs> only person. God bless you and your ministry and all of your helpers. What an amazing night. A number of people came. Uh, we, we exalted the Lord around the cross and just a number of different ministries involved. And it was just a great night to, to honor the Lord. And we thank the Lord for the vision of this ministry, wonderful to gather around the cross. And it's just perfect timing. We have Stephen Ori up there praying and leading, and suddenly the cross is lit up. Whoa, it's great. Snazzy. These guys are snazzy today, too. Look at that. Okay, we, we're going to get down to business. Here's a few announcements I want to share with you. 
Uh, Kids in the Kitchen is going to be starting, Kids and Youth in the Kitchen is going to be starting in a few weeks. Registrations are, are coming in, but here's what we need. Here's what we need. We need some volunteers. If you were involved last year and you're, and you're coming back, make sure you let us know that you're coming back. There's been some emails sent out. We need some communication on this, but on top of the regular leaders, we're short actually two leaders on Wednesday night for Kids in the Kitchen, and we're short one leader. If we're gonna run 30 each night, we need a certain amount of leaders to meet the plan to protect requirements, and so if you can help us with that, contact the office. And to be praying, how many believe that we need a strong kids ministry, amen? And we've had a great ministry over the years, Kids in the Kitchen, but it requires commitment, it requires you working with us to make this obviously a, a, a success. Of course, following the service this morning, we're gonna have a farewell for Steve, Pastor Steve and Ori, and uh, we're gonna take some minutes, a few minutes to honor them and give, give them a chance to share a little bit as they move on to this new chapter in their life. And we'll be praying for them as a congregation. And then following that, we'll be going out into the foyer. You saw, I think you saw some refreshments out there, right? Cake and stuff. Make sure you, you stick around, visit with Steve and Ori, enjoy fellowship and some food. We're, we're great at doing that as Pentecostals, right? We're great at eating refreshments. Let me mention uh, giving an offering here, tithes and offerings. Um, you'll notice in the bulletin that we have a certain budget every month. And normally we, we, are done, we do pretty well, but as you'll notice, we have some work to do. We have one more week. And, and I, I say that uh, believing, I know that over the years you've been so faithful just to honor the Lord and the giving of your tithes and offerings, and God will use that for his kingdom. If you'd like to give in person, there is an offering plate you'd find in the back and put your, your money, your checks or whatever in your envelope, in an envelope you'd find in the pew in front of you and put in the offering plate. Make sure you put your name, address, and information on there. We'd love to have a record of your, for a record of your giving. So I should, one more announcement I should mention. Uh, we've been talking about ministry in St. Vincent, and I was talking to Beverly here, and Beverly says that thank you for giving and bringing items in and giving financially, but it's going to, we're finished today, right? Because you're going to take everything that we've received, we're going to put it in big crates, and going to send it off to St. Vincent. And so it's great to partner with you, and definitely praying for you and your family that we'd be able to do this even a small something to encourage them in St. Vincent. And so that's all the announcements. And everybody said amen. 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 And I'm going to invite you to stand again. And we're going to sing one more song. And as we sing the song, we're going to dismiss the children this morning. Children ages, we have, we have a nursery. Children ages uh, two to four. Parents, you can bring your children downstairs to toddler church. We have a, a service for children ages 5 to 10, Kids Club. And so, parents, you can bring them down as uh, Pastor Stephen Ori and Kathy lead us in this song. Yeah. 
was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. for your love we thank you because you will always come after us regardless Amen. of where we are what we do your love you, you have said that you have loved us with an everlasting love and so God we thank you because we know you will never leave us nor forsake us you will always light up the dark areas of our lives you will always be with us even in the deepest darkness and so God we thank you because we know that your love is forever. Your love is everlasting and you're always with us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. And you may be seated. Thank you, Pastor Steve and Ori, for leading us in worship. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 3 this morning as we take a few minutes to uh, look into the Word of God. Joshua chapter 3. We're talking uh, for the next few minutes about making transitions and uh, this being a time when Steve and Ori are transitioning their lives. We thought it would be appropriate to talk a little bit about this. And obviously in your life, there's things that are taking place. And we're going to talk about that for the next few minutes and share some principles with, with you from Joshua chapter 3. And so as you read through Joshua 3, and I'm assuming that at some point you've read it, I'm just going to highlight some scriptures. There is a huge transition happening in the life of Israel. And really a transition, as we define it for you this morning, is a passage from one stage, subject, or place to another. There is a huge transition taking place here for the nation of Israel. Watch this. For more than 400 years... The Israelites have been slaves in Egypt, if you read through the Old Testament. For 40 years after that, they were wandering through the wilderness between Egypt and Israel, making their way to the Promised Land. What was 70 people who left Israel to escape a famine and went into Egypt, they have grown to 2 to 3 million people that have lived as slaves and traveling vagabonds for the last 440 years. So now they stand, if you will, at before the Jordan River. 
which represents a huge transition in their lives. They are moving into the land that God has promised them. And as we look at how certain steps were ordered here in this transition, ordered really by God, I think it will help us in our life as we are making decisions and we are transitioning in our life. Because, folks, the reality is life is full of transitions. I mean, we go from one transition to another, some minor, some major. Some transitions we welcome, some transitions are very painful in our life. But life is full of transitions. We make transitions from childhood to adolescence, from adolescence to adult. Obviously, those are transitions. There are transitions from being a married couple to now being parents when they have children. And then obviously, after a while, some of you are making transitions and becoming grandparents, so that's a change. There are transitions, of course, from one job to another, right? Steve, you know all about that, and one career to another. And so there's lots, I could go on and on, but I think you get the point this morning. There's lots of transitions. Life is full of transitions. We don't control all the transitions that we face, but to, to the degree that we have some control over a transition in our lives, we need to make sure that we're doing it right. There's a right way and a wrong way to transition in our lives, and we're going to see that from the Bible. And so as we look at the story today, I see four principles in chapter 3 and chapter 4 of Joshua about how to make proper transitions. And so here's some principles that I would share with you this morning. The first thing that we see here is, is that there was a right order. Now notice here in verses, uh, Joshua chapter 3, verses 2 to 4, listen to what it says. It says, after three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. <clears throat> then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But watch this, but keep a distance of 2,000 cubits, or some translations would say 1,000 yards between you and the Ark. Do not go near it. What God says here is there is an order. The Ark of the Covenant is to go first and foremost, to lead the people of God. And so let's talk about the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is, if you see, there's a picture of it right there. It's a small box. It measured about two feet wide, a little bit more than two feet tall, and a little bit more than three and a half feet long. And it was a box made of acacia wood, and it was overlaid with pure gold inside and, and out. And in it were, and you can't see this, but in, it, in that Ark of the Covenant were the Ten Commandments, a sample of the manna from the wilderness, and at least a portion of Aaron's staff that budded. That was to be kept inside the Ark of the Covenant. <clears throat> but the most significant thing about the Ark of the Covenant was <clears throat> that the lid also called the mercy seat, this box had fashioned over it two angelic creatures called cherubim. You can't really see them, but there are cherubim there. And the Bible says often that God dwells between the cherubim, the, between those two cherubim there. The Ark of the Covenant was a reminder the people, to the people that the presence of God was among them, and it would be carried by the priests. Now, and you'll see it, you see those little poles on the side, because on the exterior of the Ark of the Covenant, there were rings though, through which rods were passed through, and then the priest would pick up the poles, hoist it over their shoulders, and thus the Ark would be carried between poles that were hoisted over their, their shoulders. But the main significance of the Ark of the Covenant was it represented the presence of God. It symbolized the manifest presence of God. So what God is saying here is, make sure you follow this order. That God is always way out in front as you're following him. Make sure in every transition that God is leading. And you are following, and you are following way behind. You don't want to get ahead of God. There's a thousand yards between the ark of the and the people, the Bible says. If you, ten football fields, if you can imagine that, ten football fields, 
that separated the Ark of the Covenant from the people, God was to be out front leading the people. And so may I suggest to you this morning, folks, that in any transition that you may be going through, to the degree that you can control, make sure God is always leading the way. You say, that's, folks, P Pastor, that's kind of a no-brainer. Well, folks, you know, you, people might say it's a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised how many people will act first and pray later. Is that an ouch this morning? We act first and then we pray later. And they'll get themselves into a situation where they are transitioning, there's a major change, and they've never really, they've never really prayed, they've never really consulted God over what they're going to do. And God says here in principle, listen, God has to be leading the way. But folks, herein lies the question when you're going through a change, some transition in your life. Here's, the, here's a good question that we need to think about. How can you be absolutely certain that God is leading, and it's not just your desires, it's not just your wishes. How can you be absolutely sure that God is, is leading? How many want an answer to that? Anybody? How many think it's a pretty good question, right? How do you know whether God is leading? Listen, folks, I want to be honest with you, really straight with you this morning. If I had the answer to that question, I would have written a book, and we'd pre be preaching a sermon on the royalties of that book today. I want you to know that, because there's really no easy answer to that. I mean, how can you know for sure? There's going to be a certain measure of our human frailty in trying to discern and discover the leading of the Lord. We recognize that. But that means that we need to make sure that we're tuning into God, that we're doing things that can help us connect with God. That means that we need to be doing that because we don't, we don't have a golden box out in front of us to follow. So as God leads, as God moves, as God is guiding in your life, no one no one can really answer that question except for you. You're the only one that can really answer that question. Now, folks, this morning, I can suggest to you a few tools that can help us to make sure that we're when we're transitioning, that we're, we're following the Lord, things that we can do that can maybe tune us in a little bit closer to the Lord. So here's, here's the first tool I would share with you. If you're going to be following the Lord and knowing in your heart that this is God. I'd say, first of all, develop a mindset that, that I never want to get ahead of God. Develop that mindset. Because I think the tendency to human nature is to, is to rush into things. We don't want to lag behind God either. We, we, we want to stay in step with Him. But I think the natural tendency in our human nature is to sometimes get, a, get ahead of God to rush into things, to act first and pray later instead of praying first and acting. The Bible says many times, talks about the importance of, of waiting on the Lord. And I think it's because we tend to rush into things. We, we are terrible. We are terrible at waiting. Most people, by and large, are impulsive, impatient, or both. There's this tendency to rush into things without consulting and waiting and hearing from God. And many times we rush in and we create problems for ourselves. I could show you if I, had exam if I had time this morning, examples in the Bible of people that rushed into things, didn't stop to listen to God, were not following God, and created some major problems in their life. And so I think it's really important to create a mindset. God, the most important thing as I move into this transition and I make these changes, Lord, I want you to be leading. I want to be following you, so help me to stay close to you. And so there's a mindset there, but there's also a discipline. There's also a discipline. I believe there are three main disciplines in Christian faith. There's prayer, there's fasting, and there's Bible study. If you really want to get tuned into how God might be leading you in your life, whether or not he is transitioning you from one place to another, prayer, fasting, and Bible study, those are things that can help you as you want to tune in. Let's kind of unpack them for you this morning. Prayer is just a simple conversation with God. And don't overcomplicate prayer. Carve out a time to pray 
and, and pour your heart out to God. Talk to him about the things that are concerning you and also take time to listen to him. And so prayer is one way to tune in. Fasting is a way to tune in. Fasting is a wonderful discipline in that you deprive or deny yourself physical food so you can be more tuned in to God. You know, folks, there's something about fasting in order to, that, to heighten the spiritual aspect of your relationship with the Lord. And this can help you discern the leading of the Lord. You know, the Puritans used to call fasting soul fattening. Because while you deny yourself physically, it makes your soul fast, fat, if you will. Just your soul, not the other part of you. Fasting heightens the spiritual in your pursuit of God. And so talking to God can tune you in. Fasting can tune you in to what God is doing and how God is leading, but also Bible study. Get into the Word. Stay in the Word. Let the Lord speak to you through His Word. Let the Lord speak into your heart. How many know God can speak to you through His Word? Amen? He can speak very clearly. What happens then eventually through prayer and fasting and Bible study, what happens is as you're involved in those things, then as you're making decisions, you know what happens? Then, then the peace of God that transcends all understanding, it will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's exactly what Colossians chapter 3 says. Paul says, let the peace of Christ Rule in your hearts, and then he adds, and let the word of God dwell in you richly. There will come a point when you'll, from, from prayer, times of prayer and times of fasting and being in God's word and setting your mind on what God wants, that there'll be a peace that will come from the Lord. And many times that's the way God leads. You're going to make a decision, you wrestled it through, and there's a peace that comes in your heart. You realize, God, this is exactly what you have for me. And so in transitioning, God needs to be way out ahead. God needs to be leading. We need to develop a mindset that says, God, I don't want to move unless you are leading me. I want to follow you, and we need to discipline ourselves in the process. And so that's my first point. The rest of the points are going to be a little shorter And everybody said a great amen this morning. Amen? And so that's first. God's first. God has to be leading me. But here's the second point. There is a call in this passage to consecration. Listen to what it says. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things amongst you. Among you, rather. Now, folks, it doesn't say how they consecrated themselves. But the idea is this, that God says, there's a moment here of major change. Get your heart right with God. Make sure your heart is right with me. Make sure that you're living your life in holiness and purity before me. I mean, God is a holy God, and he requires holiness in his children, and we should always be monitoring our hearts, making sure we're right with our hearts, that our hearts are cleansed, But especially when you're going through some kind of major change, we really need to tune into the Lord. We need to guard our hearts. Make sure you're walking in holiness and purity before the Lord. Make sure you're doing that. I want you to know, folks, this morning, I want you to recognize the fact that I'm going to make a statement, and I want you to think about it this morning. A compromised life is a complicated life. Did you know that? You compromise your faith. You compromise your convictions. You compromise and not look after your heart and not make the decisions that are honoring to God. A compromised life is a complicated life. Complicated life. Let me illustrate this for you this morning very quickly. How many know what a key fob is? Anybody know what a key fob is? Everybody? You probably have that one for your car. It's that little key that you can press, you can start your car, and, uh, and you can walk up to your car, and there's authority when you get to your car that the, the locks, they unlock, right? How many people have that this morning? Well, I have one of those key fobs. And so the other day, uh, I got in my car, and I tried to start it, couldn't start it. 
I got in my car. I couldn't do a thing with my car. I'm thinking, with all the technology in this car, I can't start my car. What am I supposed to do? And I thought, well, last time I had this problem, it was that little, little, little battery. I mean, it was a little battery in those little key fobs. And so I went in the house, and I found another one of those batteries, uh, and I put it in there, and I thought, OK, car started, we're on our way. And I thought, well, I better go out and get myself another battery. And I thought, where can I get a battery? OK, so I go down to the dollar store. And I notice, I looked at the number on the battery, and I thought, I found one. Actually, I found a package with three batteries in it. What's this for $1.25? And I thought, wow, $1.25, that's so cheap. I could put one of those in there, and I'm all set for six months, right? Well, I thought, well, maybe that's not a really good battery. Maybe that battery is not going to last very long. Maybe I'm going to be stuck again. I better check and see how much these batteries really cost. And so I walked over to Metro. I looked for the exact same battery. And I found the battery, two of them, for $12. How many know there's a difference between a $1.25 battery, three of them, and a $12 battery for two? As I said, a compromised life is complicated. You complicate things when you try to cut corners. And so that's my point. Consecrate. As you transition your life, always make sure your heart is pure, you're walking with God. That's the second point. Here's the third point. There's a time to trust. In transition, there's always a time to trust. Joshua chapter 3, verse 8. Here's the instructions to the priest in verse 8. It says, go stand in the river. Now, further down, it tells us in the text that the Jordan River was at flood stage. Let me read it for you this morning. And so when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called, it's a town, you watch this? What's the name of the town? It's called a dam. The water stopped, the dam, think about that. Anyways, it's Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan. While the water flowing down to the Sea of Arab, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off, so the people crossed over the opposite in Jericho. Now, Adam was actually a town that was 16 miles north of where they were. And, and God rolls back the Jordan River, it's at flood stage, and he rolled it back 16 miles to the north so that two to three million people can cross the Jordan on dry ground. They would travel from the east to the west, they are going to cross on dry ground. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us that they had any inclination that God was going to perform this miracle. The instruction to the priest, the priest was, you take the Ark of the Covenant, ahead of the people, and you go and stand in the river. This was the instruction. There's no indication that these priests had any idea that God was going to roll back that river. So imagine, if you will, getting to the edge of the Jordan River, which is at flood stage, and you're told to go stand in the river. Imagine that. Just you, in your own mind. It involves, I would say, folks, for this to happen, it involves a wee bit of trust. Because the Bible says that as soon as their foot touched the water's edge, then God rolled the water away. Now think about this. God could have chosen to, in advance of their coming, as he saw them coming from a distance, he could have rolled the water away. He could have pulled back the water. So by the time they got there, they would have been amazed. Look, God is, look what God has done. Look at God is so amazing. No, no, that's not what God did. God says it will, it will stay the way it is. He gave them no indication that any miracle was going to happen. It wasn't until the priest put their first step, their first step, touched the water. Now, folks, I don't know about... I don't know about you, maybe the, they were faith-filled priests who just trusted the Lord and were thinking to themselves, all right, let's do this. 
if we get a little wet, it's not going to be the end of the world. I can tell you, folks, this morning, in all honesty, that if I, if I would have been one of those priests, especially the guy out in the front who's going to take the first step, I would have said, God, make it happen. I, God, I, I, I hope this will work. I hope that I'm doing, I heard you right. It's, and there's a, a little bit of that in all kinds of transitions that we go through. There's a little bit of that. There's a certain amount of risk in transition. I don't mean that in some kind of foolish, reckless way. I just mean there's, a, there's an unknown factor in every kind of transition and new venture or change where God is leading. There will be a certain measure of the unknown. And, and, and you will need to, in times, you will need to trust God and say, God, I prayed about this. I sought you. I have peace. I believe this is the right decision. And so I'm going to take that step of faith. faith. Because he doesn't necessarily roll everything back in advance. And think about it, folks. Think about if God did roll that water back in advance. If he did, if he rolled everything out in advance and took away fear and apprehension and every kind of discomfort in life, we'd never have the opportunity to see in full color the mighty hand of the Lord. So God wanted Israel to trust him and see his work and see how mighty he is in the midst of that. He wanted to bring them to the water's edge, and he wanted them to take that step of faith and believe him, and then God performed the miracles. And folks, there will be times, and there should be times, when we should be stepping on faith and say, oh God, I believe you're in this. I believe you're leading. I've sought you. I have peace. God, I'm going to take the risk, and I'm going to take that step of faith I mean, folks, we can't know everything we're going to encounter, so we need at times to trust the Lord. Amen? How many are with us? And that is obviously a lot easier to preach than it is to practice, because when you're in that situation, we want to be secure. We want to feel that everything is secure and everything's going to work out, but at times we need to take that step of faith. So in transition, make sure God is leading. Consecrate yourself. Make sure your heart is right with God. Trust the Lord. But here's the final point I share with you this morning. As you transition, you need to remember. You say, remember what? Well, this, in this story, there's a requirement to remember. To remember. Listen to the story here. In, John chap in Joshua chapter 4, it says in verse 1 to 7, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to make, take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men, and he appointed from the Israelites one from each tribe, and he said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. And so what he's saying is this, don't ever forget the faithfulness of God. Don't ever forget the faithfulness of God. Remember because in remembering the faithfulness, remembering God's faithfulness, it will help you in future transitions. It really will. So Joshua says to a leader from, from each of the 12 tribes, go into the middle of the dry riverbed while the priests are still standing there and the water is, is held back. You hoist on your shoulder a large stone, take it to the, back to the camp, 12 in all, set it up as a, as a large monument. Just pile it up. Why? As a testimony to God's faithfulness. In verse 9 we see they set up 12 stones in, in, in the Jordan also. Not only on land, but in the Jordan. Why? As a testimony to God's faithfulness. Why is it important to remember? Why, why is it important for us to set up, if you will, memorials that can serve as reminders of the faithfulness of God? Well, I would say, why is it important to do that? Well, 
I would say we don't always have a, the greatest memory when it comes to the things that God has done throughout our life. God will, you'll pray, God will answer your prayer, God will intervene. Unless you journal, it's easy to forget things in your life. Remembering God's goodness in our lives helps us in different times in our life. Watch this. It really helps us in dry times because you will go through times where you're on the mountaintop, but you will go through dry times, and it's good to be able to remember God even though this is a dry time that you were faithful in the past and you will be faithful in the future. But I also think it helps us in the future transitions. I really believe that it can build faith for you in the future as you move through life and you transition. Life is full of transitions. It's so good to know as you walk through a transition and, you know, as you walk through a transition that since God has been faithful in the past, that God will be faithful in the future. Amen? That's kind of a faith-building experience for you. God, as I make this decision, as I take this step of faith, as I trust you, I reflect on the many times you have been there, you have been so faithful, you've looked after my, me and my family and my life, and so just based on your character, I will trust you with this decision in the future. David would say in Psalm 100, for the Lord is good, and his love endures, his, faithful to connect, his faithfulness continues through all generations. And so those, those are the points I share with you as we close this morning. As you make decisions, as you transition in your life, and many of you are making decisions and will be making decisions, you're making decisions, as you make decisions, make sure God is way out, out in front. God, you need to be leading me, I consecrate, I, Lord, I prepare my heart, I make sure my heart is clean, Lord. I, I, as I wrestle through these decisions, and I come to the conclusion with peace, this is the direction you have for me. God, I'm going to take this step of faith, I'm going to trust you in this, and as I do that, I'm going to do that understanding that you've been faithful in the past, and you will be faithful in the future. Amen? And so, Lord Jesus, as we take this time, to just think about our lives and reflect on maybe, God, this morning, there are obviously people here this morning that, uh, that are transitioning, especially uh, Stephen Ori, but there's others, Lord, that are making decisions and will make decisions and are thinking about certain decisions that they need to make. God, oh God, that we would seek your faith. We never want to get ahead of you. Lord, we don't want to just rush into things. So God, today we commit ourselves to getting as close to you as we can, to hearing your voice, allowing you to speak into our spirits, Lord, preparing our hearts. And Lord, as you begin to speak and as you begin to draw and direct, Lord, that we would be willing to take those steps of faith. And again, as we take those steps of faith, it's so wonderful, Lord, to be able to see the mighty hand. Maybe, Lord, we've, take a, we've taken a step of faith and we've seen the mighty hand of God because we were willing to risk. And so, Lord, that must have made an impact in the Israelites' lives, and that water being split apart, Lord, that distance. Lord, I'm sure that impacted them for generations and generations. And you will work the same in our lives. So direct and guide us. In everything we do, we pray that we would do things according to your plan and according to your will. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to transition a little bit into a little bit of a farewell. That was a little bit of a backdrop for us, but we do want to transition in, uh, in farewelling a very, very special couple we love so very dearly. We do that have come into our midst and have grabbed a hold of our hearts, love Jesus and have served the Lord so faithfully, and we want to honor you today. And so to begin, we're going to invite Marla to come. Marla's going to come. I'm going to get a mic here, and uh, she's going to come, and uh, she's going to speak specifically on behalf of Ori. And so this is mic number four here. And so Marla, we'll get you to come and share a little bit this morning. Thank you so much for being willing to do that. Sorry, I'm not much of a 
public speaker, so I have my notes here so I don't this get lost, but, uh, okay. So good morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Marla Thibodeau, and even though I'm one of the oldest volunteers on the tech team, I'm definitely not the wisest when it comes to technical side of running things upstairs. So about eight months ago, uh, Pastor Benny told me that Steve's new wife, Ori, uh, was joining the tech team, and in talking with Ori, he found out that she was knowledgeable in all things in sound, computer, and social media. She sounded like the perfect fit with our technical genius, Brad Ramsey, to keep the tech team on the straight and narrow path to the smooth sailing on Sunday mornings. The first Sunday, Ori came to the sound booth. She won not only my respect, but my heart. Her smile and sense of humor was all it took to win me over. But to watch her troubleshoot and navigate through a computer was truly humbling. And she navigated through parts of the computer I never even knew existed. So I love her enthusiasm for teaching skills, such as streaming the service on Facebook uh, to those who uh, participate in the Sunday morning services. Unfortunately, teaching an old dog new tricks <laughs> is a bit of a challenge, so we are extremely thankful that we have a younger generation in Ryan, Kim, and Vidya who were willing and able to take on that challenge. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Ori brought new ideals to improve the sound quality online and introduced new camera angles for viewers on Facebook. We soon discovered not only was she technically savvy, but she could sing too, supporting her husband in worship uh, Sunday mornings when the worship team was short on singing support. Wow, Steve, you definitely have a gem in this godly woman who loves God and willingness to serve in any capacities in the church is a true gift. In the short time that we have gotten to know Ori and Steve, we can truly say that God has blessed us and our congregation. And we, we wish you all the best as you start a new chapter in your life. And we know that God will truly bless you as you establish family roots in a new church. We look forward to hearing updates on your future together. And even though you're leaving Sault Ste. Marie, you will always be a part of our church Amen. family. Thank you so much, Marla, for sharing that. Amen. I'm going to invite Bill to come at this time. Bill is going to share a little bit, uh, probably more about Steve, probably say a few things about Ori also, but uh, you've been busy this weekend. You can go home and have a rest after this Amazing. today. We're working you so hard. Thank you. I love it, though. I love yeah, it. Because no, it's God. It's all God. Amen. And Steve. <laughs> and Ori. Um, Uh-oh, I lost my notes. Tech oh, no. <laughs> uh, Pastor Steve has been an extraordinary friend and an unwavering pillar of support for this church and longstanding of newcomers and then longstanding members alike. Um, last night just showed me again what this guy's all about. Man, just blew me away. And everybody else it was so good last night. They closed out our service last night with a couple of fantastic songs and, and a word, the prayer the word of God through Steve. It was amazing. I recall the first time I heard Pastor Steve sing in our church. I couldn't help but think, think then, man, this guy can sing. I was man. so impressed and pretty happy for that because we always used another voice. And, um, and then listening to him preach for the first time, I was struck by his powerful words and his infectious humor. This guy is funny too. Man, this guy can preach. I said, wow. <laughs> and uh, as I witnessed the remarkable impact of his heartfelt prayers, I knew that Pastor Steve is a man who truly prays prayed with his whole heart, right from his heart. Stephen Ore, today we don't say goodbye. Instead, we say good day, see you later, and stay in touch. Though the goodbyes can be difficult, as they always are, we know that you both will always have a place in Sault Ste. Marie, a place at Elam, and a place in our hearts. My heart believes that one day you guys will be back. You'll return. <laughs> we wish you nothing but the best Amen. on your new journey. We know that God has a plan for you, and even though it may challenge you at times, his plan is always divine. Whichever church you become a part of in your new community will undoubtedly be blessed by your presence, just as we have been. Pastor Stephen Ore, God bless you both, and know that we love you. Until we meet again, may your hearts remain filled with the grace and guidance of the Lord. And thank you so much. Amen. We so enjoyed your time here.
Amen. Amen. Well, what can I say about uh, Steve and Oren? What can I say this morning? I Just thinking back, the years go, is this a sign that I'm getting older when you keep saying the years go by quickly? They do go by so quickly. What does that mean? Steve has been with us uh, five and a half years. Can you believe that? I still remember that first Sunday when uh, you came in with the whole crew. Just before, remember, just before the furnace broke down, <laughs> and we all moved downstairs, it was like in January, and uh, you, you settled into the church, and you came with such a talent, giftings, but just a heart for God, just a servant heart. Just, just Pastor, whatever, however I can serve, just a heart that said, well, wherever I can fit in, I'm going to serve the Lord, and you have settled into this church in an amazing way, way. You have really, in many ways, become my right-hand man. I'm going to miss you <laughs> big time. You have been just a blessing. And and uh, I, I think about your, my first introduction to you, without knowing anything of your story. I remember the first Sunday that you showed up, and you were sitting in the pew over here, and I walked over and said hello to you, and you were sitting with Steve, and I said, do you know Steve? And you had a little smile on your face little smirk, and I didn't realize what was behind that smile, but there was a lot behind that smile. Yeah, I know him more than you think I do, but uh, wow, you just have uh, settled into our church the last eight months, just uh, serve the Lord and your skills, both of you, your talents. I know that you'll, you are a blessing to us, and you will be a blessing wherever you go, wherever, whatever church, you know, is blessed to have you. You're going to serve the Lord and be such a blessing down in Niagara Falls. I was thinking, of, you know, there's many things I could say to describe you too. I was really praying about this, thinking about this, and I was thinking about you too. And you're, I thought, give me a, Lord, give me a, give me a Bible character that would really fit for each of you. And I thought, thought about you, Steve. I thought, you are a modern day Joseph. I tell you right now, I, Steve has a character that is incredible. Your character, and what else, what other greater compliment can you give somebody? When you think about the life of Joseph and how Joseph handled the circumstances and the challenges and just was faithful to God and just believed God in spite of kind of all these odds against him. And as I've observed you, you know, over the years, walking through some challenges, waiting for your future spouse and other adversities. You have been so faithful, and you've honored the Lord. And I believe that God is honoring you now, definitely honoring you with Ori, but honoring you and blessing you. You think about Joseph, he went through that period of time, but ultimately God elevated him and used him because he could trust him. I, and I, when I look at you, uh, Steve, I see, I see Joseph. And Ori, you say, who, who, who do I see? Who do I think about in the Bible when I think of you? And you think, well, lots of Bible characters. I was thinking, you know what? You are a modern-day Esther. You really are. The story of Esther is she's married to the, the king, and, and uh, you know, they're facing some big challenges. Uh, you know, Israel is going to be wiped out by the decree, and Mordecai, nephew, comes to to Esther and says, you've been called of the kingdom at such a time as this. And she rose, rose, she rose to the challenge, and she met the challenge with courageous faith. She served the Lord. I see you. You walked into this place. You really came with a sense of mission, a sense of God has placed me here, positioned me here. God, I've been called of the kingdom at such a time as this. I'm going to serve you faithfully right where you, where God has planted you. And so God bless you. God bless you in your faithfulness. We love you too. We'll miss you, but we know that we'll see you. You know, Steve, you're welcome to come back and preach. <laughs> if you can make that long trip. Steve and Ori haven't traveled to Niagara Falls yet. <laughs> and I was telling him how far it was. Really? That's a long way. <laughs> That's a long trip. But uh, I'm sure we'll see you once in a while. And uh, we'll be praying for you, especially in the next few days in transition. And 
praying that you settle into the community and God will look after you. And so I'm going to invite you, before we pray for you, I'm going to invite you to come, you, uh, Stephen Ori. You can come and, and share a little bit of your heart, and then we're going to invite the board to come and pray for you. But before we come, we'll let you come. I think this is your mic. I think one of these. This is, yeah. Oh, well, that's your mic. Okay, good. So just share a little bit of your heart here. Um, moments like these are bittersweet. Um, bitter in the sense that you're leaving, leaving people behind who you've come to love and know as family. Um, sweet because you're thinking, okay, God must have something even greater in store. But still a beautiful moment all the same. I would say for me, Elim made it easy and welcomed me. I'll explain. Um, you know our story. If you don't know it, uh, you can check. I think it was the 3rd of December when um, we shared our story here about how we met and how I ended up here. Um, and it was all it was all God's doing, so much so that we took an excerpt of that video and put it up, and like almost 20,000 people have viewed <laughs> that video. And it's been, a, been able to be a blessing to other people. Um, Steve, when he first came here, he was single, um, and the church welcomed him. Again, you made it easy for us. You welcomed us. Um, you gave him opportunities where he was able to preach and serve. And for him, it was great, because it was also one of, I think, his first time preaching outside of Nigeria. So um, again, you made it easy, you welcomed him. Then me joining a new church, and not just a new church, a new country, a new city, um, you made it easy for me as well. You know, coming in, um, you let me just, wherever I could serve, you let me come in and serve, and I appreciate that. Again, you made it easy, you welcomed us. Then even in finding my footing, um, I came in, I had a meeting with Pastor Ben at some point. So I you know, wanted to meet, find out, okay, what are the needs in the church? Where can I plug in? And we came up with a few things. And I got involved in a few things from kids in the kitchen. So um, more the devotional side than the cooking side, but um, just teaching the kids in devotional. Then there was um, the multimedia team or the tech team, as Marla had had described, and then also the welcome team. So having tea and coffee there just to welcome new people. But I also found it's actually been really good for the regular folk just to catch up and not just rush off after church. So again, I appreciate everything um, that you guys have done in terms of just letting me serve and letting me bring ideas in and being open to the ideas as well. Because it's one thing to have good ideas. It's another thing for them to be accepted and actually acted upon. So again, thank you for making it easy. Thank you for welcoming us. And then also in worship, um, I've, it's been a while since I've been in the choir, but it's been nice to also um, serve in worship, in the worship team as well. And getting all the encouraging words from everyone also, also touches my heart, you know, again, and we appreciate it. And then now as we're almost, we've been on the same track for a while, but then it seems like we're parting ways, even if for a little moment. Um, I'm grateful. I'd say Elam, continue to be welcoming, continue to make it easy for newcomers. And even for those who are regular here, continue to serve, serve one another. If there are places where you can plug in and you feel, okay, I don't know how to do this, but I'm open. Just mention it. There are many, there are many areas within Elam that um, we'd appreciate support in terms of um, people serving to help each other and help the service go well. Um, and for us, we can only hope to have the same or even the same, at least the same level of reception and welcome even as we go to Niagara Falls because if we get what we, if we get there what we had here, we know we'll be okay. And that's a testament to how Elim has been for us. It's been a great place. You've made it easy, you've made it welcoming, and we really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Amen. Where do I start? Um, I remember the first day we drove into Elim, um, my brother and his family and my mom, we, we had been church shopping at the time. And uh, one of the days I was like, well, I'm not going to that other church. We have to go to a different church or we start a church, <laughs> you know, something like that. And uh, we went on Google Map try to find the nearest church and it was Elim that came up on the on the map and we just drove in there and uh, that Sunday it was Pastor Ed that was preaching and he was talking about um, the power of the Holy Spirit being able to transform you and heal you and all of that I was like wow that's super word you know and then the next Sunday uh, Pastor Ben preached I was like yeah I like that guy <laughs> <laughs> 
And uh, the reception was so beautiful. My mom got a best friend the very first Sunday. Uh, I don't know how that happened, you know. And uh, I, I think it was Margaret. Uh, I, think, I think she was the one who, who called my mom her best friend at the time. And my mom was so fascinated. She was like, oh, you know, I already have a best friend first Sunday. It's like, yeah, you better keep coming to church. And uh, just generally looking at my journey in this church, it's been really humbling to, you know, when you go to a new community, you don't really know what to expect. You don't know whether you're going to be accepted. You don't know whether you're going to fit in. You, do, you don't know what's going to happen. You just take it with faith that, oh, hopefully something will work out. And by the time I joined Elim, Elim was that, you know, gave me that sense of hope because I didn't have friends in the city for a very long time. And it was like that for many years until I started coming to church. And of course, Pastor Ben made it really easy. He would call me, he would ask after me, he would, you know, just check on me generally, job, uh, my status in the country and stuff like that. I'm like, uh, I love this guy, <laughs> you know? And of course, um, I didn't, because I'm also kind of introverted, so I didn't get to have personal relationships with many people, but everybody greeted me with a smile every Sunday, or maybe the few times that they got the uh, opportunity to talk to me, they were able to maybe just lean in a little bit, know a little bit of my story. All of those things made me feel like family, and so I could, Practically say you've become my black family now, if, <laughs> if that could happen. And seeing my growth, Pastor Ben and the church leadership have given me the opportunity to serve in music um, and to preach. And you've seen me grow in the way I started preaching. I bored you out with my singleness story uh, every time I talked about it. And just to be able to see where I am today, even in ministry, in confidence, in, um, as a person, as a man, as a growing person, I can't but say that Elim has been a major part of my life. And for the rest of my life, I don't think Elim would ever leave my mind or my heart or, or my lips because that, that's what family does. And I, I just want to say thank you to the entire family to, for accepting me, for being with me, for helping me grow and encouraging me along the way. Thank you. Amen. Well, again, we just, again, we just want you to know how much we love you. And uh, on behalf of the congregation, we'd like to bless you a little gift. I'm not sure who I'm giving this to. I don't know who's in charge, but <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to invite the board to come at this time. I invite the congregation to stand. And we're going to just pray uh, for um, Steve and Ore, praying that God will just bless you. I don't know if we can stand over here a little bit, kind of side by side. The board can come here. Yeah. Um, you know what might be easier if we go down the main floor? Okay. We'll just go down to the main floor so that everyone can gather around. And let's just, uh, let's just gather around and let's just pray a blessing on Stephen Ory. That God will keep his hand. Uh, and Pastor Marilyn, come and Pastor Ed, come and let's just uh, join our hearts together and pray for Ms. Stephen Ory this time. Join with me as we, we pray. For them. And you can come in a little bit closer here, everybody. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, we're so thankful for Stephen Ori. I'm so, so thankful. Uh, really, I, I really believe that you blessed us with them in your sovereign way. You placed them in this congregation for a purpose, for a time. And we're so thankful, Lord, that you did bless us with them, and we recognize that, Lord, as they move on to this new chapter in their life, that you will continue to bless this congregation as we honor you. But we pray for Stephen and Ori as they move on to this new uh, transition. I pray you would guide and lead them, that you would protect them, 
even as they journey the next few days, they settle into a new community, into a new job, into a new church. I pray that you would guide them and lead them and, and provide for them. And Lord, I just pray again that you would just continue to use them. I know, God, they have so many gifts, so many abilities. And they've impacted so many people in this community, even in the time that they've been here. But God, they will go on and their ministry will go on. And Lord, we pray that there would be just many people that will be touched by their lives and their example and their faithfulness. We just give them to you. As hard as it is, Lord, for us to, to say goodbye today, that you love them. We know that they're going in your will, in your plan. And I, we know that you'll look after them and you'll look after us. So God, be with them. Bless them in every way. Use them for your kingdom. We thank you this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can I ask you to take a picture with the church with the selfie? Sure, yeah. Okay, so just before, just remain standing. Ori wants to take a picture. Did you want to go on the platform? Yeah. Okay, so put your big smile on. I don't want to stand in front of anybody. Well, I'm so short here, so it doesn't even matter, I guess. <laughs> okay, here we go. Amen, amen. So we're just going to pray, and we're going to move out into the foyer. Thank you, Jesus, for this time we have as we make our way out to the foyer fellowship and just to honor Stephen Ori, be with us, Lord. Bless the refreshments today. Bless our time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so you can lead the way, and we'll follow you. Get the first piece of cake, because I know, Steve, you love cake. <laughs> and God bless. <laughs>